All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin the rundown. Uh, we start off by reacting to the draw. I think, I think the draw is li really fucking funny. But I think the only thing that is inherently like bad, I think, is the fact that D DK and KT are headshotting each other's each other. I think like the fact that all the civil wars are happening in the BO1s is not that bad, right? I really don't think that matters. I think the only bad part about the draw from a competitive perspective is DK versus KT. I think this one is really, really rough. But everything else, I don't mind that Genji played T1 in a BO1. That's perfectly fine. We're going to have some great matches in the 2-0 best of three, and that's perfectly cool. Because in a different scenario, let's say you you can you can be find yourself in a situation where the best of three to qualify could be a korea versus korea china versus china so here the main issue for me is just dk and kt just because they are clear favorites i think over everyone else here the two best teams in the zero one bracket are facing each other that is the painful part while in the one zero teams are more evenly matched at the same time not but more evenly matched right the additional issue with this, right, is that DK versus KT, one of these teams will be 0-2. So one of these teams that loses is going to be playing against DK. So you, you have a 33% chance that you're going to get headshot. And then at the same time, DK and KT need to win three best of threes to get to Worlds. And that is mental. That is the only, only problem for me about DK and Kate. Like this, 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 the civil wars, I think are great. From Europe, Europe's perspective, the draw couldn't have been better. Like the only thing that could have been better is if it's like TL plays BDS and Mad plays Energy, something like this. And G2C9, sure. There, there's, there's some level of improvement that could have been better. But honestly, this is like a close like third fourth like this is still a very good draw for europe right so we have bds versus mad Fnatic versus gum we're going to have two teams already go to one one g2 versus weibo let's i think on paper that is probably although we have a very small sample size today i think that g2 this was the best team they could have drawn that is not c9 for sure right and Obviously, some teams are going to have different opinions of a one day or whatever, but I think one day is way too 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 quick to judge. You know, to 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 put Weibo on a massive pedestal and T1 in the dumpster because of one game, like you 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 have to utilize your knowledge of the past. This game that Weibo played, enemy bot lane lost the whole game level one. It's like. Weibo beat JDG all year. I think my man uh, is... Um, mm, mm, okay. All right. Okay. In terms of the matchups, I think we covered the matchups uh, after we do the rundown of today. All right. I think that we do we do the rundown of the matchups, the predictions, after we look uh, we talk about the game. Okay. All right, T1 versus Team Liquid. So T1 are banning all the usual suspects for, of course, uh, Team Liquid. Way the best team in the world. Honestly, they were pretty solid today. The weirdest thing is, is that Cadle's song has had an effect on me and also me recording the fucking, uh, the trailer. It's, has really, really gotten me hyped for, for the shy. In my attempt to hype him up, I've gotten, I've hyped myself up. Nevertheless, T1 versus TL. T1 versus TL, we have Ziggs, Kaylin, Nico, Poppy, Azir, Kalista. You guys know me. I think Poppy is so fucking broken. I think Poppy, Maokai, Javan, so broken junglers. Maokai over Poppy over Javan, I think should be the way forward. I think that anyone who is... People are going to realize. Junglers are the biggest frauds when it comes to recognizing jungle strength. Because they get confused from scrims and they get confused from solo queue. I tell you. I promise you. 
Oriana gets first picked, which is wonderful, right? Invites a Syndra, and we go Syndra Lee Sin. Syndra Lee Sin can find ways to pressure on Oriana, but Oriana is very, very solid, right? It's like Oriana is a fantastic blind. I like this Ash rotation. I was surprised by the Renata Glask because I think there's ways to actually put pressure on Renata Glask in the shape of range supports. But I think this was just T1's read on Ignar and also the fact that Korea is Korea, right? Korea is a fantastic range support player and putting him in those positions where everything is about lane, I think is a, a very good idea for T1 and what kind of players they are. I think Ash is such a strong AD in terms of lane pressure and I'm not surprised if we're going to see like some teams take this outlook. We saw a lot of Zaya today, but laning with Zaya against uh, Ash and Kate can be hard. Can definitely be hard. Sorry, Core JJ. Yeah, Core JJ. Uh, for some reason, I confuse him with Ignar. I, I don't know if the read is, yo, the enemy has Cinder Lee and Aphelios. They need to have engaged support. Uh, I think there's just Aphelios here on three is really troll. I think playing Aphelios is already hard into Ash. Ash is something that has been played too little, but when it gets picked, it is Ash countering Aphelios. Relic gets picked on four because they need some buttons on the team. And then Sejuani Jace gets picked. So Mauka is open here and they go for Sejuani and they blind pick Jace. Blind pick Jace, I think, is a bit of a psycho thing to do, uh, especially against Lee and not showing top. Uh, but it's Zeus after all, he's a fantastic Jace player. We look at this game. T1, I think the, the biggest standout for me is just Pioshik because this game was definitely winnable. Uh, Lovely winnable. Uh, they managed to uh, pick up a couple of kills. There was this dive on top side that happened in the game. Uh, we can look at it here. Uh, it was a dive top. There it is. Just find that. This is just a replay of that. And there's a Cinder TP catching the wave. Uh, that's cool. Uh, we continue. Honestly, this game, I think we should just highlight. Like, Pioshik is just, is just on a highlight reel. Because Team Liquid, from a game standpoint, if we, if, we, if we freeze frame a lot of moments in the game, Team Liquid were in winning positions. Giga winning positions. Yoshik was really on fire. Uh, he managed to kill people on site. He managed to get kills uh, all the time. I, I managed to show a moment where it was kind of bad what they did. Uh, but um, uh, we can look at, for example, the one from before. To be fair, APA probably should have solo killed Zeus here. Uh, let's look at some of the Nash situations that were juicy. Just Pioshik being busy, man. He was an absolute demon. Absolute demon in this series. Absolute demon. Let me find those beautiful kicks. Where are they, Pioshik? Show me those beautiful kicks. Oh, there, there, is, there is one, I believe. Oh, okay, never mind. This is just faking getting caught on site. So, to summarize T1 today, I think that uh, macro-wise, they showed the same uh, issues. I think draft-wise, they came with uh, uh, some risks. I think that they struggled to connect, but I think mechanically they play well. And I think that's the main thing. It's like they are mechanically playing well. They lane well, especially bot and top. And I think macro-wise, they are very unimpressive. I think that if you get through lane phase against T1, they give you freebies on site. They definitely give you freebies on site. And we fast forward. I think... Um, Uh, this was this was wonderfully played. I think um, the kidnapping here from Summit. I think it makes sense, right? You suicide yourself for the Seju, and then um, the extension. We continue. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here it starts. Here we go. This is this looks like a Leeson that is playing solo queue, man. Look at him go, man. He finds a little snack, holds the queue, hits the queue again, boom, kills him. Massive, massive, massive. And then, bro, he's in Faker's brain because what's coming up next? Let me show you. Pioshik was was running the whole game, and uh, I think that uh, Team Liquid did a way better job of playing the map. And uh, now it's coming in. This is the TP play. Here it is. Here it is. So first they find the turn on Korea. He's trying to mark and find the perfect position for the ultimate. This is very greedy. He got snacked on. 
boom, he dies. The TP gets channeled here. Look at Pioshik's reaction. The TP gets channeled, he spots it. And then boom. Boom, he flies over, gets the kick, and then the Q in. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And Team Liquid, they are winning. They are winning. They are just winning, son. They are just winning, son. Somehow along the way, we have the situation where Eon is sitting on red-purple. Red-purple, I say. They're trying to siege. They should hover into bottom side. I think APA is standing on the bid wave a little bit too much. In danger of getting arrowed, EQ'd. I think that they should just hover in fog. Let person with lifesteal be on the wave and let Syndra be the one in, of course, the pocket. Summit as well, his team is basing on mid and is dying on, dying on here. I think that the usage of Nash here was very bad. Uh, definitely what Mephisto says makes sense, right? It's like dying on side is definitely uh, a summit special. But still, you're looking at the situation, Team Liquid looking strong, you know. They have to deal with the poke and they have some champions that are rather weak into the poke. Uh, but eventually we get to this point where um, Team Liquid are on mid-wave. They're having a good time. Yeon has green and blue. Look like wonderful items. He's getting hit by EQs. I'll just fast forward. I'll, not, I'll spare everyone the pain. So here you have Yeon. Blue, red, purple. Terrible guns. Summit pushes forward. Arrow gets landed onto the Syndra in the back. And while this happens, sorry, Jace hits APA with a with, with an EQ, I believe. And then the Sejuani ult. And then the, <laughs> the Renato ult too. He got completely fucked. And then on the front end as well, Eon doesn't use his sums. He has, he, has, uh, he has heal here. I mean, he has flash, sorry. And he doesn't go for it. It was a kind of a sad way to end the game. Very sad way to win the game. It looks like Eon doesn't have cleanse, guys. As you can see, he doesn't have cleanse. And um, it was rough. But. To summarize, Team Liquid, they showed some signs of life. I think Pioshik played well. I think that Summit was posturing for a fight that didn't need to happen. And uh, that's it. You know, that's it. Okay, next game. C9 versus Mad Lions. Complete annihilation by C9. Talia first pick. Uh, Rakan Javan. I think that's perfectly fine. I like Javan into Talia. I think that's perfectly fair and, and, and cool. They also denied the Zyra Khan angle from the enemy. And if anything, maybe with what we've seen so far this tournament, maybe slamming Zyra Khan is just the most accurate and look for Javan on three. This is maybe like the best thing that you can do, you know? Kisante, Zaya gets locked in. Kisante. Just a takeaway from JC, you know, uh, that's all cool. You pick Kisante, you pick Zaya, deny Rakan, and then you pick Ezreal. I know people hate Ezreal. But I think that that people's hatred towards Ezreal is a little bit too results-oriented. Um, I think that a lot of the teams that play with Ezreal play them in the wrong spots, fight on the wrong timers, and at the same time, sometimes just make mistakes, right? I don't think, for example, this game... Oh, thank you, Andrew. I don't think, for example, this game, uh, you can uh, tell yourself... Thank you, my love. You can tell yourself that e Ezreal picks somehow is uh is terrible right it's like Ezreal can't carry but there's there's some champions in some cases in some cases no champion can um can carry salmon bread and rothberries we have gwen on four which makes sense of course into kisante blind and Gwen is just a solid champ, it's something that Chasey plays, but the enemy flexes Kisante mid. I think this was a fantastic adaptation, especially because Azir and Oriana are out of the picture. I think those champions are probably some of the better ones you can pick into Kisante, and Kisante being sent mid here and inviting the Gwen on 4, picking Jax, I think was a very, very nice adaptation. Very, very nice adaptation. Alasdair gets locked in, 
which I think is strange. It's like you let the enemy pick Alistar. I think Alistar being bad against Ezreal is a myth. I think that's just a myth, in my opinion. Uh, nevertheless, Syndrag is locked in. I think draft-wise, uh, Mad can play this game. I don't think it's that terrible. But I think that Kesanta, the Kesanta flex was, was, was a good move here. I like that. Especially with Talia Jungle. Uh, Talia Jungle having Kesanta and Jax allows her a lot more breathing room. She has CC on the lanes. And I think that these are champions she prefers to play with. If you look at the pairing that is Talia Jace, as an example, Talia Jace are weak against the same school of champions and they are strong against the same school of champions. For example, in the game where uh, Fnatic played Talia Jungle, they had Jace, but let's be honest, Talia Jace are both weak against Javan, Rakan, and also Azir if he's good at um, engaging, right? So, still, I don't, think, I don't think this was something that Mad lost out of draft. This is something that is definitely playable. They have DPS from top side, so Ezreal's lack of DPS to kill, for example, Kesante, uh, is definitely good. Uh, I think that people, teams over Prior Talia in cases where Javan's in the picture. I think that is, like, the biggest myth is that the rocks save you, right? I think that's the biggest myth. Uh, looking at this particular game, I think C9 did a very, very good job. I, I think the biggest issue, right, is uh, Niski died on side, Ezreal died on side. But I also think that Hilly and Elioia, it's like Hilly, I don't know, he, he, there's so many timers in the game where he's like walking on mid and I'm not sure why he's walking mid and he's missing XP. Like this is an example. It's like he walks on mid and I, like the idea is that he hopes that something happens, something like this. Additionally, right, I think Sapphire Crystal should have been bought here for Niski. This is a Sapphire Crystal into uh, rock and roll, you know. I don't know why Hilly is going here and this is kind of the story of the game. It's like Hilly goes top to hide in the top bush uh, that leads into nothing and he's burning some of his tempo and I feel like that Zven and Blubber were a lot more accurate today I think Elio had a fine game we had this fucking like people overreacted so hard by my tweet on, on, on Twitter like the Spanish crowd was very upset with the fact that I said that Elio and Hilly look disconnected and uh, just to, to keep you guys in the loop um, let me open up Twitter I want to show you guys my tweet real quick a lot of Spanish fans were very unhappy with this. I say, was a complete storm from C9, big time investment into Gwen, but the Leoya and Hilly being so damn off sick in comparison to Sven and Blabber was the biggest deciding factor to make this game look insanely one-sided. Oh, the Spanish community didn't like this one. They didn't like this one. And I'm not even, it's not even harsh, you know? Elioy and Hilly were not playing together and Hilly was kind of lost on the map. And their quote retweets, oh, yeah, yeah, the quote retweets, you know, I just open up here, view quotes. Oh, 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 oh even the messages that Elioia and Hilly are off sync. You're so damn defensive that you see this as some grand flame towards Elioia. You're so blinded by your own emotions and biases. And then, I think, this tweet was, was this picture is pretty fucking funny. Sorry for the flashbang. Twitter, the only place where well-articulated sentences still get misinterpreted. You can say, I like pancakes. And somebody will say, so you hate waffles? No, bitch. I saw that Niski entered. I didn't see that Chasey also entered. I didn't see that fucking Ezreal entered too. <laughs> but nevertheless, let's look at more of the game. The thing is... Keep in mind, I don't... Like, the, the Spanish League of Legends community... A part of it. I'm not saying everyone. Because I have a lot of... I interact with Spanish people. I love... I, I, I have nothing. Not, nothing. But there's portions of the Spanish community that is... That hates me even from the days of season 5. Bro, when I criticized Expeke for having a limited champion pool, I got death threats. I even got threatened by Expeke's mother. Expeke's mom threatened me. But, I love the passion. I love the passion. 
I love the passion. So God bless. God bless. We continue. So this was another moment. Hilly, I don't know what the time investment is here. Often it's like Kazi is isolated on an island and it's like Javan is bot covering while Rakan is up here and wasting time and checking and I don't know what he's playing for, Hilly. I, I, I have a hard time like justifying what's happening on the map here. Hilly is very behind an XP, doesn't reach 6, while Sven is going to reach 6. And then like the difference is, is like Sven has a Rom timer into top. And uh and uh, it's 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 rock and roll, you know. The Herald gets picked up by Kisante. Mad Lions are late to contest, and uh, it just it just looks so incohesive and indecisive, you know. It looked very very poor. And you look here, the Alistair Rome timer on top, well coordinated. You have Talia and Alistair engaged together here, and the play becomes successful. You know that's nice. You know, we like seeing things like this, you know? This is this is cool, you know? The, you guys see the clear difference. C9 are making decisions together, and they're paying attention to the missing timers, and then they commit together, play around together. That's good, you know? That's cool. And I think this was the story of the game. And that's why I highlighted it as the biggest point of the game, is that Elioia and Hilly are off-sync. Why they are off-sync? I think majority of the time, Hilly is running it down. But to explain this in a tweet, you know, it is... Um, the worst, the worst avenue to do so. And there's this moment here that Kazi, you know, this is what Kazi uh, go, gets a lot of shit for, right? I think Kazi here, you know, um, in this moment, right? It's like here, I think if he doesn't R and just plays on basic and R's after, I think that maybe he can do more. This is a moment to do a highlight reel. But then he's pushing full, walks into feathers, gets rooted, and then he just dies. And this is, of course, a big fucking mistake. Terrible big mistake, right? To make that clear. And then later down the line, there's a moment where Niski is like on top wave. Niski doesn't strike me as a Syndra player. I think like Syndra players definitely, you know, uh, are like if you play Syndra, you can you can lose solo lose the game or win the game on your own, you know. Um, it's like always when you see Blabber and Sven interact on the map, they're all both in unison. They're playing towards the same side. They're on the same screen. I, I liked what I was seeing, you know. Yeah, Niski pushes top all the way, and there's this Merc uh, Jax that is walking on the wave, and, and Niski dies three times here. Like here, Jax queues on the wave, and then Cinder walks on him and ease, while C9 is taking the Drake, and they are out of position for it, and then Niski here, he just dies, which is really, really grief. Really, 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 really bad. I think this definitely was a big glow up for C9 because this is where I felt they were lacking. I felt like this was a team that relied on Berserker, which is something that is inherently dangerous. But this was a win from the hands of Blaber and Alistar. And I feel like MNS and Fudge played solid. I think that they often, C9, I think in North America, they took risks that were not necessary. And they elevated the pressure on the game when their AD carry was actually carrying the games. And uh, I think that uh, this is uh, a good look for C9. Very good look for C9. Uh, and I liked what I was seeing. seeing. Let's look at the game the deciding situation. There's this moment with C9... Um, They just got uh, free Nash. Uh, I want to look back at this moment to see why this actually happened. Because I think the main thing for Mad Lions is they just need to cross into mid and cross into top side one time after this mid wave and then look to base. I think they're just basing in the wrong space. Because they got this mid wave and then cross into top side base and folk would have been so much better. Uh, they just needed to use one tempo to secure the Drake. Zaya, on, on live patch, Drake has Baron has been nuffed. Uh, nuffed buffed or nerfed whatever way you want to see it that's why I had the fucking crossover of words Zaya has so much damage and so much burst she's basically Kalista on crack you know uh, with this Nasher the extension of the game let's just look at the final fight 
It was quite a disappointing one. Haley got caught, had no flash from before. And um he just enters into this bush. The one that um his Javan just EQ'd out of and Haley dies. And that's the ending. Uh, Hilly ran it down, that's for sure. Do you think Zaya or Rakan should be higher prior? Zaya for sure. Zaya for sure. I feel like uh, the melee supports are too OP, so Zaya becomes OP too. Okay, let's continue to the next game. Next game was Genji versus Gam. There's not, not much to say here. I think there was a moment where like Genji took like a bad Rift Herald situation, but they won it anyway. This game was rather one-sided. Draft was pretty straightforward too. Key thing here though, Genji first picked Alastar over Zaya. I think especially Gum. If you research Gum, you know that the Zaya Prow there is their only champ that the AD can play. I think that um, Zaya Kaiser trade is pretty even. No, I think ever since Kaiser has lost the power in her AP build. I think that uh, these guys are insanely, insanely, like this matchup is not the same anymore. I think that Zaya is much better. And I think that uh, Kaiza, without her AP build, can't play on distance the same way and can't nullify a lot of the wave states and lane states while Zaya is just better. I think Zaya is the superior AD. Even if we pull up uh, Game of Legends, right? If we just look at uh, 20, 13, 19, and we look at all, and then we look at uh, Kaiser, 69 on Zaya, and then we just look at how much of those games is Kaiser winning. Of course, this is a very small sample size, keep in mind. A lot of those games that Kaiser have, has won are games where Kaiser played against things that aren't Zaya. Keep in mind, it's a very, very small sample size, but it talks about, it speaks to the idea of uh, where the mentality of teams are and what we're seeing, right? And this is what I wanted to highlight, that Slater has eight games of Zaya, that this, this guy only plays Zaya and looks really bad on anything else. So I was surprised that today, Genji didn't first pick Zaya. Uh, and then on top of that, they, they, they had the intention of picking Vi and they gave Zaya away. So this was very weird. I think that this is something that Genji should want to adjust, okay? Nigo gets picked and uh, Seth gets locked in. These are some champions that they did well with uh, in, um, you know, uh, in the play-ins, but uh, Gamma is just the worst team. BDS versus JDG. So we have Zaya first pick, Kaiser Alistair gets locked in, Vi and Rakan. I think this is a solid one, two, three from BDS. Zaya Rakan, very hard to complain about that one. Vi is something that does well at six, all cool. Javan gets locked in. Uh, Javan is a strong early game jungler that can match. I think Javan is super strong on the patch. Uh, I think that here as well you could consider Poppy if you wanted to, but uh, you can argue that Javan is better against Zaya than Poppy, right? So Azir, Olaf is the bands, and then Nico, Renekton. And in this moment, you understand why JGG chose Red Side. I think that um, they just wanted to make sure that they counter. Uh, uh, counter uh, Adam. I think that uh, picking Orn is very solid into Garen. This is something that Dom also suggested. Nar probably would have just been a worse champion. Honestly, like Nar is most of the most games just fucking useless. So I'm happy that Orn gets locked in. Cassio into Ari is also very solid. I think draft wise, BDS did a good job here. I think that BDS did a good job here. I think that um, this is something to be happy with. This is a very, very BDS draft. And I think that they have many good chances to actually win this game. And in this game in particular, uh, BDS did manage to get ahead. Uh, I think there was key macro moments that became so important for how the game played out that, um, you know, when you play against a high level team, the details become so much more important, you know? There was a situation on top side we were discussing with 369 could just flash and eat towards river and buy time and maybe Javan could connect and maybe something was to be done. In this particular spot 369 dies but he has TP back. 
Uh, here there was this dive on top uh, that was the extension of uh, the play that we just saw. I also want to highlight that Shield did a, a red into bot side invade. So he already put Kanavi behind and Kanavi needed to pressure the enemy top side jungle, right? Now we continue. Uh, this, this wave state is pretty decent, right, for 369 because even though Garen has a first blood, he lost Flash, he lost Ignite and he doesn't have TP back, right? So he didn't spend the gold. And now he's looking for the dive. Kanavi kind of plays this pretty poorly. The first EQ doesn't land, which of course is important. It's a target without flash. You should be able to hit these. And then on top of here, I think that um, this could also be a lot cleaner uh, than the flash. And then 369 had the flash too. Because like Orn uh, definitely was in a position now to be like good XP wise, which is good for his matchup. But uh, to trade for Drake is something you're perfectly fine with. Garen can, um, you know. Uh, take it easy, you know? What I like about BDS and what they've shown so far is that this is a team that... Um, if you are slipping, definitely a team that could potentially beat you, you know? I think that's that's a good look. I was very happy with what I saw with BDS today. I think it's, it's, it's good. It is unfortunate because uh, Adam doesn't have Ignite. It's like Ignite is just coming off cooldown and Karavi sniffs this out. I think at this point, if you do your research on Adam, you know that when he pushes and proxies, that he should is going to be in uh, in the jungle. I think that considering the matchup in terms of nameplates, Crowny and Labrov, like being in such a condition on bot, I think they should be happy with, right? This is they should be happy with it, and. Um, uh, still, Kai's Alistar getting out of lane with 5, 10 CS ahead is, is, is a pretty decent win, you know? We fast forward to some crucial moments in the game. Here, JDG as well, they just kind of ran it down here. It's like this, this, this Drake belongs to uh, the humble people of BDS. They're pulling out the Drake and... Uh, uh, Kanavi here, I don't know what, he just EQs, like he, he, he EQ'd, uh, as far as I know, I'm trying to remember if he EQ'd, where did he EQ? His flag is right there on the floor, so he EQ'd on the floor here, like look, he just EQs, we don't get to see it, but he just EQ'd, that's really troll bro, really insanely troll, like Shio should ult him right away, I don't know why he hesitates, he gives Kanavi time to breathe, and uh, he just one shot, and then the extension here, C69 is trying to collapse, but he just gets killed, and this of course, is a very good swing for BDS because they secure Herald off of that, they get two kills off of that, and Garen is in prime condition because he's going to farm playthings on top at the same time. There's a bit of an item gap on bot, so this secures uh, JDG, uh, the first Drake. I think the crucial moments now in the game are just the dragons uh, uh, across the board. This was also such an unfortunate fight because I think the fact that Nuke doesn't use Petrifying Gaze here is really, really troll. Like here, Miasma, right? He Miasmad, and then why is he not r Like, just fucking R, bro. He's walking towards you. And I think that this is where you murder, and uh, it could have been slightly better, because Kanavi got so many spells off here. And maybe if they kill him faster, can be the difference uh, between uh, this fight being uh, bad or good. And JDG played this well mechanically, but maybe BDS could squeeze a little bit more here. Here you could see teams like JDG preparing for Drakes in a more at more dimensions, right? They they are preparing Drake by pushing out top all the way, and through that are going to take a Drake position. Because right now, I don't like the fact that Adam, I think Adam playing his champion, I think it's better for him if he just plays on Folk of War and actually contests the wave that uh, that the Orn is trying to push. Right now that he's quite strong, and I think that he should look to get XP, look to get level 11, and try to create a circumstance where top wave is in enemy turret in order to create a circumstance where he can be the one collapsing. But instead here, they're taking this tier 1, which is, which is, which is fine, they take a tier 1, but here Orn gets to push all the way top for free because Garen is revealing himself. I think even in a world where Adam does this, I think that he should just stay committed and just sit here the entire time then. Here Adam burns the ultimate of ruler, which is, of course, is a price, which is cool. And uh, for this price, the enemy gets heralded and top wave gets pushed all the way, right? 
So here they lost a lot of farm and then they tried to retake topside, which means that they lose the Drake position. I think the window of action here for BDS was quite poor. And I think that they could have been uh, a lot better uh, off here if Garen was on the top wave, contested the Orn. I don't think that they can necessarily die. And then they contest into bottom side as four and play a match game rather than a split map game against a team that is preparing for the Drake on that side of the map. So yeah, Kasu shows on the top wave and JDG just decisively step into river. They push them out and then they just leash Drake and Cassio is too late to act here. There's no TP. I was mentioning before if Adam stuck around in this area and maybe Cassio flash uh, TPs, maybe there's something to, uh, to, to do. Maybe there's something to do. I think JDG uh, played... It's like early game. They made mistakes. Kanavi made mistakes for sure. But... The level their macro is at and in terms of how they fight and how they move is so damn beautiful. I don't think I wouldn't be so worried because I think the nuance of how they played, I don't think that BDS had much of a chance. And uh, we'll see some of that very soon. This was solid, killing knights, we had the flash smite, super solid, they use a lot though right, um, it's a big commitment, it is what it is. We continue forward, actually there was a moment that I missed, I think after the drake, after the drake, I think here in this moment, JDG trying to take this crab is really troll, I think they just put Herald on mid, Ari's pushing top and the, the game is like really really good condition for them. I will continue. This next Drake. Seemed to me that they couldn't find the right gold distribution for Zaya to actually hit Navori on time and in unison with this Drake because the base time is quite late. And it seemed like they were spotted on that mid ward that happened, right? And in this moment, Ruler is doing the Drake and same time JDG already secured top side so they know that the Nasher play is unlikely. They're walking into this space and um, that being so cool come and collect it here is super super cool. I think that if um, you know JDZ is allowed to do this because they're playing with information. I think in a different world here if BDS decide to hit Nash uh, things could have uh, this could have maybe been an opportunity. I think Ari catching top I think if they start hitting Nash could have been really really good. Could have been lovely. We extend this game forward, they start hitting Nash way too late because they saw the Drake pop. Here Adam is on a flank on Ruler, and uh, let's just take a look at this fight. He's into the bush, he cleanses the Ignite instantly in the, in the silence. And this is uh, a trade that favors Ruler of course because Adam used two sums. And JDG also, they just show a masterclass in terms of pressuring Nash. It's like they dropped Garen to 1 HP, they knew he had to base or region for a long time, and then the moment she was in contact, combo into Ari, Ari, Ari combo, boom. It's a snack for the team, for the culture. Yeah, Crowny of course should have R'd, and then maybe Kankasio can play the game, but... Um, it, I, I read this comment in chat while I was co-streaming this and so I was like, how can Zaya have 6k damage against so many frontliners? Thing is, I'm sure there are things that Crowny could do better in this game. But, JDG's frontliners, they don't take damage for nothing. They don't take damage for nothing. I think macro-wise, JDG showed super much here and I think that in terms of decisiveness and how they play together I think that right now is insanely good I think BDS should walk away from this game proud I think this was BDS showing what they are capable of against a team that is insanely good and I think that's a big plus to me I think that's cool
If Alistair doesn't take damage for nothing, then explain Kellen to me. <laughs> it's good to have you back, Steph Curry Sim. G2 versus Dam 1. G2 versus Dam 1. G2 with the Oriana first pick. Alistair Azir gets matched. Uh, let's check out the bands too. I like the fact that G2 targeted Kerry junglers, right? If you look at DK's identity, I think that Java and Lee Sin are definitely champions that you should headshot, right? I think this is a good draft strategy. Caitlyn, Java and Lee Sin, I think is a very good read. Invite the tank v tank in the jungle, right? Super cool. Nico ban against Caps. Kalista targeted, of course, on your boy. Kalista 100% presence today. Um, super nice. I genuinely believe that BDS have no place in Worlds considering the way they played until now. What, what kind of metrics are you judging this by? Of course the first time Chatter needs to say something so stupid. Like, you realize that there's going to be good teams and bad teams. And top 16, the bottom 10 teams are going to be way weaker than the top 6. It's like, BDS... Got to here, fair and square. Fair and square. And I think they had a fine game against JDG, really. They had a fine game. Uh, let's focus on G2 versus that one. All right, so Kisante gets banned. I thought I was surprised by this one. But then again, you know, blue side Kisante is one of the stronger blinds. Uh, it is what it is. Oriana gets picked. Alistair Pryo. Once again, the Korean teams are showing high Alistair Pryo. Alistair Pryo. And um, Alistair Pryo. We see the Alistair Pryo insanely high. Even over Rakan, right? Over Rakan, over Rakan, Alastar is well beloved, right? This is something I said in my Google slide, right? If you guys remember my Google slide. My Google slide was uh, the one. Just uh, pull up the slide from my Google slide. No, not new. I don't want a new one. My old slides. I did this, did this little, a little presentation thing, and we just go to, to Alibaba. I said, what Golden Guardians missed? His existence. I think there was way too little Alistar in, in planes. Right? Okay. Uh, we continue the draft. Draven is something that people consider like decent into, into Alistar because you can cancel the combo. But I think it's like one of those things where, you know, Alistar will still find a lot of value. Right? Mauka gets locked in, and I think that today and tomorrow will slowly dispel the illusion of teams that think that Maokai is an OP. If you look at what I presented here, when we look at the jungle, uh, jungle thing, I say, so Maokai should be first picked, and then the extension should be Poppy, and then the extension should be Javan. That is, that is my, like, like... All the, the junglers are very delusional about this right now. This is, this is a little bit troll. I think Ivan fits that box too, because he really warps, warps compositions. And I think that the answers is... Mauka is hard to kill, he is not OP. Okay, Mauka not being OP, I think, is, is delusion. Probably a jungle player, MDG Aero. Jungle player. Nevertheless, Varus gets locked in as a soft answer into Draven. You play a poke Varus, and it is what it is. Here, because you showed Alistar, range supports are going to be very dangerous to you. Rel gets picked on 4 to put into jungle against the Maokai. Rel is a strong champion too. And then Renat Renekton and Renata, and, and then Jason 5. So here in this spot, I think that Renata is rather weak, right? I think Renata is rather weak against composition that spoke you. And I think that G2's uh, cohesiveness in this composition is rather bad. The reason I say so is that Draven wants to play a fast game. Oriana and Maokai want to play a slow game in terms of game speed. That's nothing to do with how they fight. And then later, your only engage tool is Maokai. I would have much rather preferred something that has a lot more pressure and where you can leverage your presence in Fog of War more, because I think Renata's role here is very dead. Her role here is to win bot lane as hard as possible, 
but I think that Nautilus would have just been better due to the enemy showing Varus and Alzir already. I think that the Renata value here is optimistic because even though Renata can be fine against Red and Alistar, these champions need to act second. They need to act second. And I think it would have been better. I think Braum is very bad as well. It's like Renata hates to play against high range champs. What I mean when I say act second is that Renata wants to invite the engage and this is how she gets value. But when enemy champions outrage her, she's very, very weak. But Rel and Alistar don't have to go in. But to be fair, 99.9% .9 of the player base, just because they have Rel and Alistar, they go in anyway. Even though they didn't expect Jason 5, which is perfectly fair, Varus and Azir still have that, right? They still have that going for them. This was a crazy, crazy game. Crazy game. I think that Hansama and uh, Miki, them managing to kill that, get that kill on Kellen to get the gold was super, super good. We had Mauka invading the bottom side to make sure that his bot lane can play his bot lane can play aggressively, securing a free Drake because the bot lane matchup is hell for the Alastar and the Varus. It's really, really hell. And um, eventually we'll find this all-in timer on bot. I want to show the smite because this is kind of cold. Canyon smote better than Yike on his Q smite. How cold is that, man? beautiful i'm gonna eat a raspberry in honor of the boy we continue we continue i think right about now we're gonna have the all in on bot kana Losing Flash here in the 1v1 against BB. Trading Flash for Flash. And then Oriana hovering. He gets pushed off the turret. And then Oriana walks into, into mid again. Shomek is getting PTSD. Because 2019, he played against Caps on Yasuo. And he has never seen a Yasuo roam top to dive the enemy top laner. Or his own top laner. He has never seen that before. And now this Oriana is moving on the map too. Here we have the situation where, for some reason, Kennen decides to combo in. I think it's now. We have a good play from Mickey. He gets the pull. He instantly pulls because the enemy has cleanse, which is super good. And then Han Samu with his lethal ranges. Boom. Cash out. Cash me outside. How about that? Kellen, of course, griefs. Kellen here. Just don't combo. And all is good. He can W. And then all is good. Uh, just. Maybe don't even use any spells. Death still has flash. Keep this in mind. And Kellen. I think if he just uses W it's better. How much cash was it? Let's, let's try to see the exact number. Where is it? Six hundred bonus. Hans it could definitely flash out as a W, but then you have Q and your own flash, right? Kana now without the flash, and this is why we don't like Jace top too much, is that uh, he's just a champion with a target on his back, right? He's just a, a champion with a target on his back. And um, you know when he dies once like that or burns sums like that, you know he's going to die again. And Oriana did a good job of uh, finding a roam timer on mid. Azir is in base. 
he chose to not base and he chose to stay on the map and gets a kill again. And this, of course, is uh, breaking Jace's ankles. Funnily enough here, Renekton is super, super fed, but breaking the top turret makes it very easy for Jace to actually recover the game. Jace can now do golems and he can pe keep ping-ponging the waves and defending dives and pressure on tier 2 is much easier, right? Much easier. In this situation, a lot of the gold and the presence is in the hands of BB, but he is not participating in this fight because he has no flash. I mean, he has no... He doesn't have flash. Actually, he does have flash. He's getting it up. And no TP. So the, the enjoyment of the power of BB is not here. Now we have this Azir who is sitting on, of course, uh, Ludens. And you have Oriana flanking. This is not a position that you want to be in. I think that here, I think that... Uh, uh, this is just a poor fight position here from G2, but they want to look to fight because Draven has Trinity Force. But looking, Oriana's late and then Renata is forced to flash over the Drake wall. This is not good. The timing here from Canyon was really, really nice. And that's it. It seems like the Halo Blade seems strong in lane, from what I saw. Usually I would see people run comment, so I'm not so sure about the Halo Blades. I didn't like his build though, I think if you go Halo Blades, just go full AP, and I think this is definitely like a Leandris game in my mind, you know? The Leandris looks pretty good, and go AP, and have a good time, you know? Now there's this issue in the game that um, it's very easy for Dam1 to claim any waves and play on distance. This is the pain of their composition. It's like Jace is farming up and uh, the collapses that Renekton can do through top into mid are not super relevant. The second Herald was used to try to break mid tower, but it's rather easy for Red Side to actually uh, hold down the line. Very tough for G2's composition to actually progress the game. Uh, they're getting the Drake, but they lost the Chemtech Drake from before. So, uh, red side composition has bought themselves some time. I think this is a very, very good moment for the people that doubt in Maokai of how OP this Maokai champ is. But... Um, Let's just have a look at this situation. Look at that. Look at the size of that ultimate. Standard coach wants Maokai Poppy play wants Lee Sin Graves. 100% standard, yeah. I'm trying to look at the macro decision here and if there's a way for Dam1 to actually be more elegant about this, but uh, the Varos is late on the midwave and uh, Draven is getting it and Renata and Maokai are very quick to collapse into bottom side. The, the pink spots them, but Azir and Rel play on the wave. I wonder here if Showmaker just uh, tries his best to try actually kill the wave rather than going for caps or looks for R if there's something that can happen. Doesn't look like it. I'm thinking killing the wave is the most important and then things could get uh, very silly fast. This is honestly, I think, the, I think the tier 1 bot is just not defensible. Yike isn't spotted, he was spotted on pink. Or is this like a hidden passant of Maokai that he's just um, invisible? Maybe Maokai when he's next to trees, he's just invisible. <laughs> yeah, Canyon actually runs it down uh, I didn't even see this before but uh, Canyon's usage of spells is uh, quite terrible here that's for sure that is quite horrible that is that is disgusting <laughs> terrible 
this was a crazy situation that really really snowballed G2 out of hand they needed they needed uh, they needed ways for the game to accelerate itself and situations like this to gain more than the tier one was crucial for G2 uh, with this advantage G2 feel uh, like uh, their testosterone is screaming in their balls I want action I want action says the testosterone uh, they decide to uh, put themselves in a position where they are forcing Nash because to be fair when the enemy support does something like this you uh, you want to get more so he does that and they think to themselves well enemy team has no Alistar maybe in a situation where they let him live and keep Malka ult, maybe that's a better situation but making such equations on the get-go is insanely hard so now G2 uh, the key thing right is that they need to find ways to burst this Nash together like even you can go so far to say I'm going to Oriana W Q R with you on Smite and we're going to um, we're going to burst it together to the Nyrel. The other way is that we look to play on the Pixel and then we look to turn on them here together rather than going all the way into uh, like like you're supposed to force Nash here to invite the enemy coming into you and then choose an action appropriately you Maokai sapling and then you like play and uh, to fight on them uh, on this bush right but instead what G2 do uh, G2 all decide to hug this wall and additionally right there's a ward in this so that's an additional layer there's no pink there's no sweep that also makes it a lot worse that I spot now they just have vision of the situation this entire time uh, we have the continuation and now finally uh, G2 were like yo let's hug this wall I don't know what the fuck they're doing I don't know if it's Hansama saying I'm gonna cancel Canyon uh, but the enemy team has pinks they have sweeps and they don't deny vision if Yike has no smite and this is real I, G2 trolled so fucking hard <laughs> that is insane <laughs> if Yike has no smite oh my lord but it's like it's not only that Canyon steals it, he also gets like a crazy good engage. Which is so fucking funny. Azir has like the biggest DPM there. It's like looking at the fine details now, right? If Yai had no smite, they have no pinks, no sweepers, no Maokai ult, doing the Nash is rather shit, you know? When did G2 lose vision over the wall when the pink was placed? Does this count as a Baron Steel? Yeah, this is definitely a Baron Steel. If, if it says like this, right? Where Draven, Oriana, Maokai, Renekton and Rel killed Nash? Then this is a Steel. Wooden Pigums. All right. Now, crucially, Damon now have Nashor, and they don't manage to extend this. Some that G two do well is that they manage to recognize that on this map they need to position onto the bottom side, and it would have been better. See, a Draven just sacks the mid wave because the enemy is not pushing forward, and Damon decide to commit to the Drake. But here, Yag managed to get the leash on the Drake. And um, Yag is super happy. Like, G2 is super happy to just get this as a 50 50. Damon have Nasher in this position. They have heavy poke in this position. The usage of Baron here is quite terrible. Let's take a step back and check why the side lanes are positioned like this. Oh, never mind. We're stuck in a replay, so we can't even check. Because looking at the sideways, Renekton is pushing side. Uh, they, are, they are giving up the mid turret but Renekton is pushing side so most of the time here in this position 
Dam one want to be the one. Um, I wonder now if they are just griefing by seeding this this turret mid. I'm thinking they should collapse on bot. I think that's the mistake that they are sieging here and playing for the tier two. But I think if they are folk and they are running after Renekton, I think it would have been better. They are investing a lot of tempo into getting this tier two. And Caps, like G2, are doing a good job by not being on the mid wave. This is something that I told a lot to my boys against K Corp. If we're not contesting the mid wave, don't be on the mid wave. Don't eat shit for free. Here, of course, Mickey took a spell in the forehead, but uh, BB's on the flank. And this Drake was so crucial for the game because the main reason, the main reason G2 won this game was because of Ocean Soul. I'm telling you. I think also Kana is a little bit too timid in the way he pokes. I think that he needs to find better positions earlier on. And I think that uh, that made the advancement here a little bit slower. Good EQ here from Kana, the first one. Now Canyon flashes over the wall, doesn't get the smite. And uh, G2 did the good, the good thing of just piecing the fuck out. It's hard for them to hard commit on the opposition, but the EQs that they send out in the Varus queues and how Azir is allowed to posture is extremely, extremely important. And I think the fact that G2 didn't put themselves in the crossfire of Jace is important and good. But Kanye was looking for a fight and then realized that this fucking uh, Drake is just dying, right? So he just flashes. Who's your MVP on DK's side? Kellen? Honestly, if it wasn't for Showmaker's shit build, I would probably say Showmaker, right? If it wasn't for Showmaker's bad build, it's Showmaker. That's my take. It's just that we have this Bob the Builder build going on here for Showmaker, and it's kind of insane. The next moment in time now is uh, Damon's recognition that G2 are going to over posture through bottom side like they did on Drake number four, and they found a window to pressure Nash before they allowed that to happen, which was really, really huge. And BB in that sequence managed to push our boat all the way and find a flank. And as you can see, G2's composition here against the poke is very, very hard to push forward. They don't have a lot of engaged tools. The only thing they can really do is, of course, a Maokai ult. That's the only ability. And then again, the Maokai ult can be blocked by Arasa, can be blocked by Rel. I think Deathcap second gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, so, there's definitely that. Uh, if you go Deathcap Ludens, your third item, you can go Void. Uh, you can go defensive item. You, if you're not sure about what flex item you want to buy on second, going death cap works. But keep in mind the large rod. Keep in mind the large rod, right, is a tough thing to, to, to purchase. So, this particular situation, uh, Daemon just pushed the enemy out all the way. G two cannot stand on the mid waves. They tried and caps lost all of his HP. And then through this, the enemy is not on this mid wave. They just started Nash right away. And Nash damage is not, uh, doesn't exist, right? Like, here we see a situation where G2 actually tried to push on mid and don't play through side. And then that extends into Nash for free. And the window of Nash getting killed is super important with the Drake. But here the silliness of this situation is... It's like Renekton is a good, in a good spot. And I think, realistically, Damwon should be in a winning position. They don't spot Renekton. He walks all the way around and, 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 and he just... He just watch Renekton now. He's gonna walk, he's gonna walk. He goes all... He, go, he dodges that ward and then walks around here to Deft. And Deft refused to flash. I don't know why he refused to flash. Why does he refuse to flash? Don't like Death's position too much either. But he's just not flashing, holding it. 
Uh, because his HP is crucial, right? BB dies, but G2 managed to actually kill the Drake and smite it and get away. My lord. And his ocean soul makes every fight so unplayable. Now it's going to be a montage of players that refuse to die. Uh, before that though, we get a big int from Kellin. Look at Kellin. My lord. Cap saves the situation, then we have the Renekton TP. I think Kana also is so late with TP all the time. I think Kana's situational awareness is a big problem for Damwon. And uh, the fight is extended, and now Kana comes in, just EQs. And then Kaelin as well. Just eats a sapling, and then presses E, and doesn't combo for space. But as you can see, Showmaker has a piss build. And the enemy has Ocean Soul. Two very big issues. This build, Ocean Soul. Problem. And uh, the rest is history. Really, the rest is history. Nash will be killed before the enemy can do anything or act. And then finally we are in this situation where Elder Dance begins. But now, bro, G2 and the Ocean Soul, and look at the damage done of Maokai. And look at the damage done of Azir, Varus, and Jace. And then you look at the HP bars of G2. The story of this game is plain and simple. The poke is no longer relevant. The ocean soul and the ocean drakes is healing so much. And the Maokai saplings are completely one-shotting them. Maokai has shadow flame at this point. Do you think DK can win if it's not ocean? It would be easier, but I think it's too far-fetched to say that they will win for sure. Because most souls are really fucking good. Mountain Soul is really good. Hextech is really soul. I give it Chemtech probably, then it's useless. Yeah, Kellen does another one for the homies. For the homies. All right. G210. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. All right. Weibo versus Energy. God bless him. Poppy first pick. Yes! Yes! Bobby first pick. Bobby first pick, Maokai out. Here as well, Weibo, they banned Zaya. NRG, I think the biggest fuck up here, I think like Talia is acceptable, but I think the biggest fuck up here is that they don't consider picking Kaiser. Thank you very much, XLR95, appreciate that. I think, that they, like in my mind here, why don't they pick Rumble? I thought Alistair Rumble, pick Eddie on three, all is cool. Why, why, why are teams refusing to pick Rumble? That to me is strange. Kalista, like if you're picking Kalista and you're going to win lane against Kaiser, I don't mind it, even though you're playing against Poppy. It's not that terrible. But if you pick Kalista and you lose lane against Kaiser and you play against Poppy, you can go fuck yourself. That is the truth. 
Oh, Drama Banana. Thank you, Drama Banana, for the 10 gifted subs. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. So, Poppy, Alice Italia. I think Rumble should have been picked. Weibo, pick Rumble. It's like they're just picking S tier champ after S tier champ, and then Kaiser gets locked in. Kalista gets picked. I told you, if you win late with Kalista against Kaiser and you can snowball, Poppy isn't that deep. But Poppy against Kalista and you lose lane against Kalista, it's all too much. Here they banned Blitzcrank. I didn't even realize on stream, but they banned Blitzcrank. They ban Blitz. They're playing Kalista, Alistar, and they ban Blitzcrank. Thank you very much, Drama Banana, for your kind words, too. I appreciate that. Thank you for the thing. Thank you to Suds. Thank you. Blitzcrank ban. They go Jace. I thought, oh, maybe they're going to play Jace top. But if they play Jace top and Talia jungle, then their comp will be shit, right? It's just this seems so anti NRG. NRG should FBI should play Zaya Ezreal. He should be a non-factor. He should be a passenger. Play something that enables Ignar to play the game, and then put more stock into the solo matchups. Make the solo matchup stronger, and then it's better for NRG. But this is just they, they lost the plot here completely. Lost the plot. Leona Alzi gets locked in, and uh, Blue Side is very AP heavy, so I like the own lock in. It's definitely like Biss here, of what you can do. And uh, I was talking about here, yo, maybe they're gonna ban Yon. Maybe they're gonna ban Yon, invite Jace for Blue Side, play something like this, right? I thought they're gonna pick top on four. I thought there was, I thought they were getting, I thought they were getting interesting here. I thought they were gonna make something exciting happen, but instead it was so flat, very flat. And I repeat, I don't think Talia Jace is a good pairing. I just don't think it's a good pairing. I think they're weak against the same ship. Looking at this game, this is going to be the fastest review. All right. We need the timer, okay? Someone time me, right? Someone time me, okay? The fastest review of all time. Hey guys, this is Yamato Kano. We're going to review Energy versus uh, Weibo. That we have this fight level one, and somehow uh, FBI just loses his sums. He gets eat once and he gets chunked and then of course he gets one shot here and then uses cleanse and then uses flash two and now the lane is over. Poppy do three camps topside. Talia was told by his bot lane that they can't die, can't get dove, so he's pathing into top and he doesn't change his pathing. And now Weiwei, Wei, he believes that oh maybe Talia can be on the wolves because maybe she saw the top side and is gonna path into bot. But he, he checks the wolves and then oh look at that, boom, she's not there, we're gonna die bot. FBI doesn't have any sums, FBI does a little jiggle into of course the wall, gets knocked in, and then boom, Igna gets chased. He tries to escape death, but he doesn't manage to do so. Nimble's cloak of the ignite, and then wow, the game is all over. Ding 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 ding. So some other details. I think that uh, yeah, like Azir solo killing Jace was massive too. Uh, like uh, Palafox was getting dicked on. It was kind of funny to read the memes, right? Jahu saying that uh, Palafox looks interesting as a player. You know, a lot of these players that get hyped up is just about their efforts in solo queue. And um, I have to say, way, way to me was the MVP in this one. Weibo Gaming dominated, and uh, this is the moment when Palafox dies. I don't know what he's doing. To the skies, baby. The last thing I want to show about this game, I want to show you this fat ultimate that the Shy dropped on the enemy head, and he had first strike, and he got 200... And 65 gold or something like this. Let's find the moment. I think it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming! Look at the gold! That's the biggest first strike gem I've ever seen! Holy mother, man!
This is the first game of Rumble at the tournament. I'm telling you guys, this shit is gonna age so fucking well, I tell you, man. This is gonna age so fucking well. Just, just check out the video, man. Just check out the video and you can be really smart with your, with your friends. Wow, Zaya. Zaya is OP. Everything is rolling around Zaya and there's answers into Zaya? Kaiser is not even listed as an answer? Is Yamato crazy? Wow. That's crazy. That is crazy. All right. Enough ego stroking. Let's take a look. LNG versus Fnatic. Is there a public link to the presentation itself? You have to look it up on YouTube. I need to get something out of this. LNG versus Fnatic. Poppy ban. That's very smart from them. Very smart. Kalista ban. Lee Sin. Oriana, Rumble, Maokai. So they're denying the Rumble, they're denying the Maokai. Oriana seems to be very strong. Very standard bands. Here, what is the issue, ladies and gentlemen? Enemy first pick Zaya, which is S tier on the patch, right? Zaya, Oriana. Here, the issue is Poppy, Maokai, Lee is banned, and you don't put yourself in a position where you get to play the Javan. No Javan, no bitches. No Javan, no bitches. Not a big fan of that. This is the video, guys. This is the video. All right. So they go Renek Tantalia with Rumble out. It's like, it's semi fine, right? Um,. I think an issue for Talia is that I think I thought Talia jungle would be really big at this tournament, but I think what I missed is how bad the mid lane pairings are together with Talia, especially because people don't like to play Tristana that much anymore, right? So, so that was a miss of mine pre-tournament because I did put Talia as my most banned, and that's that's going to be very off. So Javan gets locked in, and then Rakan, and I think Talia E is really really fake against Javan Rakan. I'm telling you that much. I think it's very very fake. I think that here, for example, you could go Javan, uh, Rakan yourself, and then pick AD on three in the shape of Kaiser. I think it would have been better. Uh, here they go Renek Tantalia. Enemy goes uh, Javan, Rakan, and then it's like picking AD here where you drop support. It's like, sure, you can pick Kaiser, but I don't think it would have made a difference this game. The main thing, right, is I, the thing is about Talia Flex. Talia Flex is not super relevant because most mid laners can lane against Talia. So if I'm picking mid against Talia, it doesn't impact what I blind. I will pick exactly the same champs. I will pick Oriana, I will pick Azir, right? And that is the truth. So the flex of Talia is not super exciting. Can't you play Ziggs here? Isn't it very good into Zaya? You kind of pigeonhole yourself into uh, Talia mid then, because enemy can snipe AD mid, right? If you pick Ziggs on 3 as an example, and you have Renekton Talia locked in already, compositionally you don't have flexibility due to your damage mix. So Syndra Nigo gets banned, and LNG just pick Azir, and then Jax. I think that Ezreal in the right hands, in the right, in right games, can be very good. There's definitely moments, like for example, this game, LNG just beat out Fnatic flat out. Mad Lions completely ran it down. So, I don't think it's a question of Ezreal. I really don't think it's a question of Ezreal, guys. I really, like, there's games where Ezreal is weak. I think we saw that in the BDS, uh, some of the BDS games, where Ezreal is just straight up weak. But... Picking Ezreal into Javan, Rakan, Zaya is pretty fucking good. This is the information that he has. Ezreal is not the problem here. I just think, don't get why we pick Jace as we are clearly not used to playing with Jace comps. I just don't get why you would say something uh, like we're not used to play Jace comps when Fnatic did that all year long. They're just playing against a team that is much better than them and also they had weaker draft 1-2-3. He missed so many Q. But the thing is, you realize that when you play against better players,
that it's harder to hit spells? Yo, these auras, 38 months, that's crazy. That is crazy. It's like, I can go into my Diamond 1 game as Ezreal, and I can hit most of my Qs, and I can look very good in the context of that game against those players. But do you think if I play against Challenger players, that it's going to be the same game? This is like... This is just Fnatic against LNG, one of the tournament favorites. It's really not that deep. People are jumping to conclusions a little bit too fast of a very small sample size. But nevertheless, I think playing Talia Jace against a composition that has so many ways of forcing on you, realistically, with Javan, Rak, and Azir, I think that's pretty, pretty tough. Very tough. Looking at the game. Uh, keep guys, you have to check the bands. You guys keep you guys keep suggesting champs that are banned, like Oriana and Poppy. Find the humility to not suggest things unless you're fully engaged, you know? And then we can save a lot of time and, and energy. What about the Nico? Didn't see her today. Humanoid is not a Nico player. And Nico is banned for 5. Can't see the bands. It doesn't matter. Warrington. Are you trolling? Alright. Crucial moment in this game. The push out on top. Tarzan doesn't get spotted on his own Raptor camp. So... He does enemy raptors. And if you don't see Javan on these raptor camps, then uh, you you should have the read as Talia that Javan did your own. Still not spotted, still not spotted. You have to assume that Javan, like if you think Javan is two golems and is just masturbating, it's really true, right? Now this play, I like it from Fnatic. They're pressuring dive. They know that Zika has no E and Oscarine has W. So this is a good play. But the main thing here is that Razorg needs to flash and combo on the fucking stun. It's crucial. It's crucial. But Razorg doesn't do it. If Razorg flashes... He's dead. And it would have been a great play. He gets to flash the damage. And this buys enough time for Zika to get E back up. He gets level 5, which is a given here in this spot. And then Razork is just in the dumpster. And all of a sudden, this game is insanely hard. Insanely difficult. Very, very difficult. Marek Brazda went Merc Threads here against Adri Solo because he wants to play the game, but I don't think it's that great. I thought that Ezreal and Rel were doing a fine job uh, of maintaining lane phase. Trimby had good timers. I think that uh, Noah and Trimby did a good job against the Zaya Raka. Uh, I don't think, like looking at this, them having base first against Zaya who has no base, they had tempo. These are things that uh, were very good for them. But I think their top side was just um, very, very bad, you know? Played, played quite poorly here. That's why I'm saying it's like Ezra has nothing to do with this. It's like Ezra is a solid pick into what they were showing. And uh, we continue. This was very poor from Humanoid 2. It's like... I was worried when I saw this draft that um, Humanoid is going to have a target on his back. Right? And this death follows him flashing and no flash against javan azir is horrible 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 disastrous in fact he flashed for nothing he face checked for nothing and now he's now in the dumpster the rest of it is just a montage of um or here tazan kind of griefs with eq No, I think the only jungler that really prioritized Ivan was Weiwei in other regions. I saw Peanut also played it. And then we continue. 
Had the TP on Zaya and we got the kill uh, on top side too. And Renekton managed to get out of a situation that was very, very sticky. So Jax died, Zaya died, but uh, as it is 5 0. And this moment is just wallet gap at this point. No flash on Razork from before. And um, yeah. LNG are just having a good time for the rest of the game. 9-2. and two, The game is over. And uh, GG. GG. Yeah, I think, I think Oscar did fine. It's like... Renekton and Ezreal, in terms of their potential impact in this game, it was rather minimal. I think that draft-wise, they were worse off. Mechanically, mechanically it was poor. The level one was kind of strange, but let's be honest about that, lazy, lazy fools. I thought it was strange. The outcome of the lane was perfectly fine. Like when we looked at it live, right? I thought it was like, why, why doesn't he skill E? Like, what the fuck is happening? I still have to, like here, like I thought he, he entered the lane already. But then it's like we fast forward. And his conditions played out fine. Like, in terms of the re HP he regen, he managed to get three. I don't know if Zika could play better, though. It's just that this is his HP in the lane. I think that my read on this is that Jax is actually over-pushing. I think that's my read. But I can't see everything from here, right? I just see that those screens low HP, right? But those screening, you know, there's some players out there like APA, a lot of the energy players, they are playing the first match on stage. They do, they did a, like all of these players fucking pulled up the, a decent performance against uh, teams that are just better than their teams. Yeah. Yeah, like if they get that kill on Jax, maybe they can snowball off of it. And bot lane was doing well, you know. Uh, still, there's a danger. It's like you're playing Jace against Azir Jarvan, and you're probably playing against the most lethal 2v2. Le most lethal 2v2 ever. Yeah, it's also the same for Hung and, and Zika. These are the first, first game at the international tournament for them. All right. That was that game. Billy Billy versus KT. What a damn banger, ladies and gentlemen. KT definitely could have won this game. But speaking from a draft point of view, are you guys beginning to recognize the pattern? Do, you can take the green Maokai pill and exit the matrix. <laughs> or you can still live in your jungle delusion. Here's Zaya's first pick. Once again, S tier, we like it. Right? Slam it. But, KT, give up Maokai. Maokai Jace, they slam it. And then in 4 5, Alistar, Nautilus, they cannot give Kesante here. Kesante is by far the best blind you can give Billy Billy in this spot. So you cannot do it. Zack was locked in which is engage tools, you know? Engage tools, and then it's like, if Zach uses E towards Zaya forces R, she ha he has like play that can CC off of the R. It's like, Zach isn't completely crazy here. It's completely fine. Mauka can't pressure him too hard in the jungle, maybe level one with Q, but then he missed Talia mid. But Zach was fine here. I, I kind of like the Zach. I didn't like the Aatrox on five. He picked Aatrox into Kesante. I think Kesante is very happy with that matchup. You'd hope that something better would be picked there. Isn't Ivan better? How would Ivan be better when the enemy has Jace Maokai and you need to be the one forcing on the enemy team? You need to find tools to force on the enemy.
Pick something else top with Ivan. What's something else? Zach was perfectly fine here, guys. I really don't mind Zach. I think, if anything, this is one of the rare games where I think Fiora is actually good. Very rare Fiora game. But this was a Fiora game. Gwen, no. Too much magic resistance. This was definitely, guys, this was a Fiora game, if I've ever seen one. What about Garen? Garen would have been fine. Garen would have been actually fine. Yeah. Garen would have been solid. Lee Sin, no. But you have to play Fiora versus Ben. It's like, it's keen. But also, I think Kisanta was the best ban. Nevertheless, I think that blue side draft is like Exodia draft. Thoughts on Poppy over Relder? The thing is, you're picking Poppy support. Sometimes you don't want to ask your support to first time that. And sometimes you don't want to tell your support to pick Maokai either. Can you please tell me how can Zach play in this game? What do you mean? Zach was, was decent in this game. But I think an issue here is that they ban Nautilus instead of banning Kisanta. I think Nautilus rel very similar level champs against Rakan. And I think Kisanta is insanely strong. Don't get me wrong. Zack is a solid fourth pick, but I still think blue side drive is much better. How can he be useful against enemy comp? Zack is good against Jace, and it's not bad against Zai either. If Zai uses R on Zack E, and he has spells after to follow up, it's good. But I think KT did a very poor job of timing their engages. They didn't pay attention to, each, to, to, to themselves well, and that was a big problem. Let's look at the game. Early game, uh, KT was very busy. They tried to gank Yagao over and over again from the Raptor Ward. Uh, they managed to get Drake. They ganked bot two. Eventually, we'll have a nice solo bolo from aiming on bot. Not solo bolo, but pretty much solo bolo. Like aiming, finds a little angle. I like it. Good to see you, Nervarian. I hope you're enjoying the coast streams, brother. We have the gank timer that doesn't pan out. KT's bot lane is playing solid, playing well. No, no, like Zach is like Zach is really solid. Yeah, first day was really, really fun. I agreed, Navarian. This was the kill that we talked about. They managed to secure the Herald and bot kill. Aatrox and Zach didn't pick up the Herald, but they were exited the pit. And that was uh, solid, right? This game was a very, very long one, and I think that the, the final details later are a little bit more important. Here, when I watched this live, I thought maybe Rakan could do more here. Like if, the, if Talia, it, 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 this is like the example of their timings being a little bit rough. I think Elk played a really, really fucking good game. Uh, I don't think he was gapped. He played really, really fucking well this game. Uh, like, he got killed here, sure, but he played a very good game, I think, Elk. Uh, nevertheless. So, for example, here. KT's choice of the fight timing is very off. The fight timing here is very, very off. Cuz goes too deep and Rakan is not connected. Rakan is playing on Talia timer and aiming has ult. If they are in unison here, 
and they timed together with Rakan connecting on the E of Zack and they played the fight like that would have been a lot better. Imagine Rakan has R and chips into Zaya as she lands with her R. She cannot buffer the E and then all of a sudden it's a completely different fight, right? So as you can see, right, this timing, this fight timing was just very, very poor and they managed to kill all of the Blobberoonies. And now the fight extends and the fight is just terribly played. And this is the story of KT in this game. This is the story of KT this game. This was very, very bad. Big swing here after KT was in a winning position like Goldwise. Atros managed to get some top platings because uh, Brother Bin, he TP'd to join the fight. But now let's look at the next fight. This was very strange because I thought my man's a psychopath. Uh, but there was a lot of spells being used and Keen actually managed to flash out. And Malkai went to... Uh, I'm trying to remember what the caster said because it was so aptly put. I don't know if he said Alaska. Out to Asgard. Oh, sound is, sound is actually off. Sound is off, so you guys didn't hear. There's Kaz again, right in the back of the elf, sends the feathers out to Oh, Al he's talking about elk's feathers that went to Asgard. I thought Maokai went to Asgard. I guess Maokai went to Asgard too. Kane as well. <laughs> well nevertheless, this, this fight start sounded so weird. It's, it's very, very common to want to play for the kill here but if they play for the chunk and atrox ult it's a big win right but they, this guy this shun went to valhalla and then of course elk has to react very fast and that's why the zaya feathers go bound obviously oh putting the feathers there sucks you know? but this fight became very very bad even though king tp like a psycho but it turns out he just the goat and this was probably the only fight that went well for kt all things considered I don't remember what else he happened is. in the game. Um. Let's fast forward. Bottom line, it depends. There's a flash from Lahan's instant reaction. Inhuman, maybe, but there's a flash away as Cuz follows. Here, very well done from Katie to rotate the spells of Zaya. And this is where Billy Billy want to go on the counter engage. But Kaz just needed to flash this. And then we have Zaya no ult, Zaya no go, Zaya no flash, and we would have extended that to good stuff. But instead, the other way happens. If you look at this moment, right? Kaz? Maybe Elk doesn't need to flash, maybe. But it's hard to judge in that moment. So we have this moment here, Keen over posture, dies. BDD on the back end. Gets rooted by Maokai. Very long range ult. Very insane. Elko's gapped. He's in the Matrix, bro. Alright. But as you can see, KT extending a fight that wasn't good. Keen over posturing. BDD getting hooked by, by Roots on the back end. Then I really like this Billy Billy decision making here. They're like, yo, you're not gonna fucking get this Drake for free. You're gonna get this Drake for free. And we're gonna take Nash? No fucking way. We're gonna push you out. We're gonna push you out, get the Drake, we're gonna play Nash later. I like that. I like that a lot. This is what I was looking for.
So they're trying to go for the classic play where you use uh, Kaiser to gank side to react off of CC. Really, really cool. Uh, ben is kiting back, kiting back, flashes away. The W doesn't land, but Aiming is looking for lethal. He flashes forward. And here, Yagao, who TP'd and Zaya is on the place. You think to yourself, Kate, you just ran it down. They're going to die here and then they're going to lose Nash. But Yagu. Yagu. Yagu, I've spent the whole year protecting you, Yagu. And hyping you up, Yagu. You can't do shit like this, Yagu, after you've played a pretty fucking solid game. Come on, Yagu. How about you, Goku? And, pins down. and then he sees red. All he has to do is play time. These guys are in the meat grinder. And my man flash forward. Played as if he has face rush. And this game, this just became super, super dirty. BDD. Loki fucking griefed here. And here come the Bang Bros. Chun chases him. Really, really good here. Good tip. Chun goes all the way. Puts the saplings, cancels the recalls, turns around to Drake. We like to see that. We like to see that. Lehens. Smoking a bit of crack. But it's that good stuff. And KT, due to portals being a thing, managed to get Nash. Without the portal, without the portal, none of this works. This is a portal specific situation. The tempo on Nash is portal specific. Lehen's crazy antics, portal. So much time, and even though he eventually ends up going down, so much is invested by both Keen and Aiming. I think even if Lehens didn't do that, I don't think it would have mattered, but at least, even with Aiming tanking that one turret shot, at least he didn't die. Stepping back from Elk and then able to stay alive, even with the feathers coming down. And we continue. So they got the natural. Here we go again. Aiming, aiming, aiming. Cleanse, ult, flash. Lehens plays very well. CC's bin off of the W. He needed to. Oh, no flash, actually. Yeah, that's true. He doesn't have flash. I thought he had flash. But I think he could have found a better ult. He could have found a better ult. He had like a frame there when he was not CC'd. And then Bin the cycle just slays him. Bin, 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 Bin. Look at the moment Bin decides to do this. Now that I look at it, I wonder if it's like, yo, this guy has no flash, let's fucking fight. Because look at Zaya's position. He's collapsing, but a lot of players be like, oh, Zaya's on mid, I'm not gonna go. It looks like this fucking Talia doesn't do damage. Like they, they know this flash is coming off cooldown. I thought when I saw this shit live, I thought he had flash. It's a crazy good play, bro. He actually, they timed it and they knew. Crazy. So consistently trying to shut down the Zaya's here too. Oh, no, oh, on gets snacked on. He's gone. Brilliant pick. And then we have this situation here. Yeah, Aatrox is on the flank. He's not spotted. Pops the sapling. Saplings are really balanced. Really balanced. Kaz gets it. And here it's understandable what Keen is doing. He wants to look for a fight. Uh, aiming has aiming has hold. And um, they want to fight because On is dead, right? To look for this fight, I think, is perfectly reasonable for Keen. But I think that it looks to me like KT are kind of selling him. It's like the Maokai ult. I guess the Maokai ult is what makes this bad. Now that we see the Maokai ult, 
It seems like if they wait out the Malkayut and then go, maybe it could have been better. Look at that healing here. See that green number? You see that green number, baby? It's completely reasonable to look for this fight, though, as Aatrox. We continue. Here, the final fight. I, th I believe this was the final fight. We saw this in the replay when we, when we watched this on the co-stream. Look at BDD, man. Here, Keen finds an angle. Kaz is going. Rakan tries to connect. And keep in mind now, Talia has ult and Kaisa has ult. But look what BDD does. Look at BDD. He blocks off aiming and he blocks off himself. Aiming ults through the root. Oh my lord. This was terrible. It's like, I feel bad for Keen because in a lot of these situations, it looked like Keen was inting, but I think he low key got fucking griefed. There's some situations where he went too fast, but I think some situations he got fucking griefed. And Keen looks stupid here, but in reality, if we zoom out, it's just an optical illusion because BDD is just running it down. New video about G2 if you want to watch it. Oh really? Where can I can you link it, Paula? Link it. Look at BDD, bro. Look at BDD even after. Bro, he flashes over the wall. Ah, uh, look at Bin. Ah, uh, Kesante. The last tournament of Kesante, ladies and gentlemen. The last tournament of Kesante being like this. What a KT have left in this back pocket. You need to tell me, Chronicle. The hex stack. Elastic slingshot. It's on to on. And now these homies have fucking hex stack dragon. Okay, hex stack dragon is not normally. It's not normally. It is not normally, guys. I think we're gonna get one more fight. I think we're gonna get one more. Hex stack dragon. Soul. It is not normally, guys. Tech him PC, then broken dam. Thousand HP tank. Look at the JCQ lands. Uh, someone said Yagao was bad. So someone said, like, Kaz was bad, BDD underperformed, and Yagao underperformed. It's like. Yagao made the mistake on bottom side. Other than that, Yagao played the fucking solid game. What was wrong with what Yagao did today? Uh, I will check. I will check the link soon, Bala. Thank you for the link. I, I saved it. I saved it. For dying and making this a GG. And for BLG, you have two options. Either you go all, all in. All right. It. And that is Billy Billy. And ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, and for the LPL, mm, the LPL is 4-0 today. The only region that was undefeated. Hum, 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 hum. Hum, 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 hum. Could it be Papoom?
All right. Let's have a sniff. Predictions, guys. Predictions. Guns blazing. Weibo versus G2. Weibo had a really good game. But I think that it was a gift from NRG. I think one day is enough to sway me. I think G2 is the favorite. But G2 the same way. Got some nifty gifties from Kellen. They have some shit to clean up. And I think their draft, if they didn't have Maokai, things could have been a little bit harder. But I think the fact that G2 have side selection coming into this one, I think is a big plus. If In terms of who had the cleanest games today, the cleanest games today was Weibo and LNG. I think G2 having side selection is big. That is big. Didn't Genji stomp? I was kind of a whatever. They have side selection. I need these motherfuckers that don't know the rules to stop telling me. What is going on? I swear to God, if you go, if the, the, the homies, the homies, if you guys are wrong, okay, you guys are wrong, I'll make fun of your intelligence. If you're right, I will apologize. But we read this shit yesterday. Swiss stage. The right of side selection for the first game in each match in rounds 2 through 5 will be granted to the team from the higher draw pool. Okay. Thank you for wasting my time. I think G2 having side selection is a big plus. I think G2... I, I, I am slightly towards G2. But... They could have lost today. They could have fucking lost today. I think the fact that they have side selection and blue side really, really sways things for me. Isn't DK stronger than Weibo? I don't think so. This is by no means an easy matchup for Weibo, uh, for G2 though. Weibo can definitely win. I think it's like a 55-45. But I think that side selection in a BO1 is really big here. Apart from that Baron flip, I think G2 played a solid game today. There was also the Drake fight. Um, and there was also the questions of their draft. Right? I think 55-45 G2. Uh, but I think Damwon, it's just Damwon, the fact that they have Kana and they have Kellen and their macro looks really, really bad. I think that it's clear now that Damwon is probably the weaker Eastern team. All right, Billy Billy versus JDG. JDG's got their number. 
the thing is, if I look at the facts, right? Billy Billy today played a weak early game, played a fantastic end game. And I think that Billy Billy on paper, there were moments in time where they looked at like they could be potentially better than JDT. I think Summer was one of those moments, but they just can't beat them. They just can't win. They can't win. But a single match of BO1 can happen. Can happen. But I'm going to predict JDG. LNG versus C9, I'm going to predict LNG. JNG versus T1. Brrr, drum roll, Gen G. I think T1 actually looked pretty bad today. I think T1 looked not good today. In the other matches, honestly, honestly, Team Liquid, even though they lost against NRG and the regional matchups is always different, I feel like TO, you know, TO is. Uh, is in the box. TL is in the box. I have a slight feeling here that TL is going to win. DK versus KT. I think KT is going to win this one. I think that the support situation and top lane situation is a problem for Damwon Gaming. And once again, I repeat at the beginning of this video, beginning of the stream, I did say that this DK KT draw is insane. Insane. Chad, did he just skip LNG C9 matchup? Did I say LNG is going to win? I didn't say much more than that. I don't think... I don't think it has to be said. BDS versus MAD. Right now, BDS just look better. I'm, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of getting my hopes up for MAD. So tired. So tired, man. I'm done with MAD. I'm done. Bring me back. Bring me to life, Hilly Sung. But I'm gonna go with BDS for this one. Fnatic versus Gum. Chewing Gum. Fnatic's gonna win this one. And those are my predictions.